<laughs> West Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground as well as in Mosman. Now, when um, this show was out, every Monday night, 7 p.m., we know where we were going to be. We all watched every episode of this show. We did not miss the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And because we didn't miss the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, we were able to watch these things unfold. The Janice Hubert situation. You know, we all remember that first episode when they had the new Aunt Viv on the show. And then they kind of, they like, something's different about you. <laughs> when she first came on there, she was, what, my hair? I don't know. It's just something that's different. And then Will, they, they do a close-up on Will, and he just lifts his face up like, uh, like. Because <laughs> we all knew what it was, you know, it was the new Aunt Viv. So they just made, like, light of it. And back then, there was no social media, so all you had was, like, magazines and the news to keep you updated. So you only knew what they told you, unless you knew really what was going on. So during this time, there were other uh, people that was interested in working with Janet Hubert. Because, like I said, I had friends, I don't want to mention their names in this situation, but, you know, I had friends in this industry. So for other networks, they were like, oh, well, she'll be a perfect mom situation if we just bring her in here. But the word was out. She was, when they put that stamp on your resume, difficult to work with, that's going to screw you up. I don't care who you are in this business. When they put that stamp of difficult to work with, agent, difficult to work with. It's like having a typecast on you that you can't get off. You could have been having a bad day. Once a certain person with power put that on your resume, then they go, oh, okay, well, oh, they work with such and such. Call Brad. Let's find out about him. Oh, he's a good, talented person, but difficult to work with. Difficult to work with? Like what? That follows you every job interview you go. That's like having a burglary on your record and you serving your time and doing good and then you ask for a job at the bank. It's going to be very hard to get that smudge off. Now, Janet Huber, as I explained, the problems that happened, and people say it was a problem on the set, it wasn't a problem on the set. The problem was she created the problem. <laughs> it's always money. This was a situation about money. Will Smith made more than everybody on the cast. The show is called The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Will is the star of this show. Now, she's not demanding that she gets what Will gets. But she was rallying, trying to rally all the other employees who were low paid like she was, who was still getting decent money, but it wasn't what Will was getting. We all need to get more. And she used the situation that happened on the TV show Friends, which is a sitcom based on a group. And it's called Friends. It's plural. This show is called The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. It's singular. His name is the Fresh Prince. <laughs> the show is named after him. So it's not a group thing called Friends. Okay, you see, this show is not called Will the Fresh Prince and Friends. So she thought, she saw where they got like, they all went in there and negotiated and they all held out. And they all fought the studio 
So they had to come back and pay everybody more money, and each one ended up getting like a million dollars per episode. So she's thinking, man, if we can get that and we talk to Will, Will will do that for us because he's cool. Then we'll all come back and get more money. He can fight for it. He's like, look, you got your own manager. Y'all do that. <laughs> my manager handles my business. Your manager handles that business. I don't do this. <laughs> you know, this is not where I'm... So her disappointment was in the way Will, you know, was handling this situation. Then when she was pregnant... She thought the studio was looking for ways to have her removed and and all kind of things and and she was asking for simple requirement for rest, you know, cuz she's pregnant. And this is when like the friction started because the studio saw her as a problem. So even though they written the baby in the script, so they weren't trying to get rid of her, they written her pregnancy into the script. Which is dangerous for a television show. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but when normally normally when they add a baby to a show, the show is canceled within like the next year or something. So in introducing a new character like a baby is not normally a good thing. Ratings dip and then the show is off the air. So this happened on a lot of different shows too, by the way. Now, going and moving along, over the years, we've all seen Janet Hubert express her disdain for, like, Will Smith and everybody else, and it seems like she's been blackballed by them and everybody else. Will Smith could care less <laughs> about this Janet Hubert situation, really. I mean, the thing she done on that set is probably producers managers directors people who did not like working with janet hubert and put out a bad word will smith has never said a negative word about this woman publicly he has stated that she is a brilliant person and she brought a different type of like attitude for the mom that was needed for the show like she could dance she had a, a degree for dancing and things of this nature she was what the show needed. She was brilliant. She's very intelligent. So, I don't understand. She says she tried to reach out in 2009 so that she can get some closure to the situation. Because I think that's what she wants, really, is closure. Because she's a scorned woman right now. She was upset that they let her go off that show. She's from Chicago, by the way, in case you guys didn't know. But that's not why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because this is a scenario and a situation where it's like two. It's been going on for so long. You can, People show their colors or you get to see the pain and hurt in other people. When things are going on for so many years and they still have this thing. You know? They're still on their breath. So, I don't know. To me, I think it's, it's kind of retarded. That she would still keep this disdain on. But it, I guess if it's something that really hurts your heart, it sticks with you. And for them to do this reunion picture, you should have known you weren't going to be invited. Why would they? <laughs> These people have not really spoke to you in like 20 some years. And every time you they do speak to you, it's like, hey, how you doing? And, you know, they keep it moving. These people are out having a good time celebrating the reunion of the show. They're probably going to do something for like Entertainment Weekly. Where they all get together and take those pictures, you know, of the show. They're not going to invite you. You you got removed from the show. You didn't quit the show. They fired you from the show. So they're not going to hire somebody who was disgruntled and bring them to the show. Then you prove them right as soon as they post this photo of them out there together. 
you go right into ripping into uh, Roberto. Who's Carlton on the show? Oh, he's just a, a white, a, a kiss bud and a media hoe. So why would they bring you on the show? <laughs> I mean, bring you with the cast. there will never be a real reunion of the cast. And you tried to reach out to them to do this show. I mean, reach out and, and mend things with you and Will Smith, and he was not interested in doing so. His manager said you reached out, and that was it, but he's always spoke of you in kind. Every time your name is mentioned, he spoke of you in kind. Now, this just closes any door, but it exposes the public to, to paint you as the bad guy in the situation. You have opened that door 25 years later. Anything you've been talking about has just been thrown out of the window. Because they're out there celebrating. You know, reunion, they work together and all of these things. If you had any disdain with them, you could have reached out to all of these people via social media and said, I would have loved to have been part of that. But there's some part of you that still harbors ill feelings towards these people. And that is what's eating at your soul. And you're allowing it to. 25 years later. And you haven't moved on. The Will Smith interview after she was let go. And he said in Atlanta. I could straight up say that she wanted the show to be called the Aunt Viv Show of Bel Air. Because I know she's going to dog me in the press. She has basically gone from a quarter of a million dollars a year to nothing she's mad now but she's always been mad and she's been jealous of his career and he said that she said I've been in the business for 10 years and this snotty nose punk comes along and gets a show no matter what to her I'm just the antichrist and that's the way he looked at it. And that was that was all he said in 93 when she was gone. And now you come out and attack Roberto. Alfonso Roberto. And come out and show people you are disgruntled. It looks like you're jealous. You look like everything they said about you. So if you weren't these things, people wouldn't say these things. You just made yourself look like exactly what they said you were. So if that wasn't the case, you just proved their point and validated why you're not there. I'm out. I'm done talking about stuff like this.